Now, considering the tough market conditions, impact has also come on the colorful and exciting world on, of NFTs. And several enthusiasts want it not to be counted under the usual umbrella of currencies and assets. It's a special uh, phenomena, is what they say. But I have some numbers here. And that's what uh, will form base of our conversation with our experts. So see, monthly sales volume on the largest NFT marketplace, that's OpenSea, plunged to $700 million in June, and it came down from $2.6 billion in May. So just compare these two figures, $700 and then $2.6 billion. And it has been uh, quite a far cry from January's peak of nearly $5 billion. Now moving ahead to the next fact, which is uh, according to nonfungible.com, by late June, the average NFT sales sunk to $412 from $1,754 at the end of April. They track sales on Ethereum and on in blockchains. Hence, we come to our second discussion, which is has the NFT bubble bursted or is it going in the right direction and probably just bearing the impact of the overall disturbed market climate? We'll get answers to this uh, from the industry experts. We have Sandrina Paula, VP International Partnerships, Guardian Link. We also have Ajit Kurana, founder of Flexical. A very warm welcome to both of you. Uh, my first question to Ms. Paula here, if you can decode what's really happening in the NFT market, you are a pioneer in this field uh, already. And of course, you know, these figures are not very encouraging for someone who's thrilled about NFTs. What exactly is happening? Oh, okay, thank you for having me here. Uh, first of all, I, I want to address that, you know, any asset class for that matter, having, you know, they all have its recurring ups and downs and NFT as well, you know, it's just another asset class. But uh, once the NFT has matured, let's say with utilities, we can say that it should have less volatility, you know, and I would like to address it right from the root cause behind all of this, mm -hmm. because we are um, we are in a very unique period in history. Let's you know, we, if I want to highlight some being the um, geopolitical issues with Ukraine impacting oil, wheat and, you know, the, the social mind state of the entire world. And as well as there's global inflation issues, there's huge, you know, interest rate hikes. And all of this, apparently, in some way or the other, it has impacted earnings. And, and hence, you know, the stock has impacted in global markets. Now, you know, there, there were several, you know, unfortunate crypto losses, like we all know about the Terra stable coin going bust, but and also like uh, crypto liquidity issues, you know, due to panic selling. And all of this has really, uh, you know, affected the market and NFT is no different in the market from where we're looking at right now. Hmm. Okay, so you would say that, you know, it's overall uh, having an impact of what we are seeing with other asset classes as well. Mr. Kurana is also here. You know, we started with NFT and especially here in our country uh, with everybody getting onto it via art. Uh, do you think this decline is because of the shift maybe now probably investors or enthusiasts are moving from art to other uh, variants of it. Do you, do you think that's the reason behind the shrinkage that we're seeing? Let's understand the shrinkage, the price going down from around 1700 to 400 on an average means that in terms of Ethereum, the price did not fall at all. Close to 80% of NFTs are denominated in ETH. 20% is for all the rest. Hmm. And ETH has fallen 75%. So the price in ETH, for example, if Bode was at 100 ETH, based on the price that you showed, it should have been 25 ETH, but it is close to 80 ETH. So what I'm saying is that there is a little bit of a cross currency fluctuation issue also. But the point you made is also very valid. A lot of people, and I'm very unhappy to say this, a lot of people who were buying NFTs were not really bothering about what they are buying. Namely, it was a sort of gold rush that buy anything, it becomes more valuable. And in a market downturn such as this, the good news, if any, is that people start looking closer at what it is that they are buying. Are they buying a ticket to the movie or is this ticket the end product, right? And there are two very different things, right? Mm. So I think that that is what has happened here. Yeah, same question to Paula. Would you uh, agree with Mr. Kurana here uh, that, you know, people were just trying to ride on the uh, hype of it. For example, we have this example of Jack Dorsey's first tweet, which was sold as an NFT for $2.5 million. And then the person who owned it struggled to get bids of more than a few thousand dollars for it. So would you agree with what Mr. Kurana is saying? 
I do. I mean, uh, you know, everybody has their own opinions. Like, um, I would also like to add that, you know, if you take a long term view, say, uh, 20, back, uh, if we go forward to 2024, 2025, NFT will be, you know, a very crucial asset class because mm. blockchain will play a major, you know, global technological role as everyone is slowly adapting to blockchain, including government officials. And crypto will re emerge as a powerful, you know, network of asset. And yes, so will stock markets, so will real estate and consumer goods. Now, uh, this era of Web3 just, you know, just added something new. Like uh, we all have heard about Web 1.0, which added internet, 2.0 added the social media, and all of which, you know, have gone through downturns. And then if you notice everyone, all of these industries came back stronger, you know, like, uh, uh, 1.0 crash back in 2000. Mm. Amazon stock was three dollars, and today it is a trillion dollar company. So we look back, if we look back in you know 10 years and feel the same way of this industry, even more dominant than we can you know actually imagine, because uh, the world of blockchain in itself is no less than an ocean. You know, it's a space with enormous meta possibilities, and I we've seen both the you know, boom of crypto, it's it's uncertain and, you know, uh, there's loss in it, there's growth, but surely, you know, the, the dip in the crypto recent months, it's it's really impacting the space as well. But I'm sure that, you know, it, it's going to go back up addressing to my first um, mm. root cause. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Paula, since you operate in this world of uh, NFT, you know, I hear from so many of market experts when they say uh, games are the next big thing in NFTs. But then, you know, we right. see the biggest NFT based game, which is Axie Infinity, has also seen its in game token collapse to less than half a cent, I think. Uh, would you say that games are the next big thing in NFT? Uh, I would add to it because one thing that connects gaming is, of course, a utility, which is an uh, NFT in itself. In fact, we in Jump.Trade are also launching the world's biggest um, play to earn game, which is a cricket based NFT. And we're launching it uh, next week, this month itself. And anything that has utility always attracts, you know, an NFT. Uh, Axie and if NFT was successful because it had utilities to it. Hmm. No NFT. I would be very blunt and honest and say that, you know, like you, know, you cannot just go on and drop an NFT. You need to have a meaning behind it. You need to build that community. You need to know what's the purpose of that NFT. And only then will your NFT project succeed you know like we have a lot of nft projects not everyone is you know you know not everyone has their success and yes it's it's very critical it's very important and we could see this in the gaming industry which is booming and it is here to stay in in the gaming world okay so you're quite excited of course uh, and standing with it <laughs> uh, in the end also uh, to just wrap it up i would also want to talk about the regulation part of it mr Korana. you know the groundbreaking new uh, crypto regulations agreed by the european union last week they excluded the mostly excluded nft and you know spain is also seeking to clamp down on the way video games sell virtual assets for real money uh, let's talk about Indian context as well. Of course, it's accounted as a VDA, virtual digital asset. Do you see or, or do you expect a separate sort of regulation for NFT or these to be treated differently? Three, four days ago, the government actually came up with an NFT specific circular in India. This is much after the VDA classification in the union budget, which said that if the NFT represents an underlying physical asset, such as real estate, yeah. then the NFT will be governed by the underlying physical assets rules, such as gold, real estate, etc. However, if the NFT's underlying value is intangible, then it will be regulated as a cryptocurrency. Well, regardless of whether I like it or not, actually, I would say that it is reasonable given India's stand. If they had actually said all NFTs are going to be treated not like crypto tokens, frankly, there would be a rush for crypto entrepreneurs wrapping their utility tokens and calling them NFTs. So actually, I think it has been a reasonable step by the government. Okay, I have last 30 seconds, Ms. Paula. Uh, is it a perfect time to build a collection since, you know, the market is not performing great and some experts say probably this is the right time to build a collection. Would you say that? Well, uh, if you look at it, you know, like uh, with the NFT projects just being launched in the couple last month, with the crypto bear market brands like hmm. Coca-Cola, they are releasing a price series of NFTs 
to support the you know LGBTQ community. Latest celebrities, you know, like Kevin Hart, he's launching his NFT project. He's just announced it. In fact, like you know, even with the crypto bear market, uh, Cristiano Cristiano Ronaldo has just announced his partnership with Binance as well. So you could see that there's a lot of the industry from every vertical space. You name brands, you name fashion, you name celebrities, you name athletes. Everyone is hopping into this thing, uh, you know, even automobiles industry, like Bentley mm. just announced the launch into the market. So it's pretty much so to say, like, you know, it depends on the project because you see, you look at it at a long term perspective mm -hmm. and how to build it. And they may announce it at this bear market. But, you know, the, the supporters of each of these projects, let's say I'm a fashion supporter, I would support that brand and I would get the okay. NFTs because for me, it holds an emotional connect. So it's more about building communities is what, what you are essentially saying. But thank you, both of you, for uh, joining us for this conversation.